I mean, like a pretty, you know, no, <laughs> <punch. laughs> like a pretty moderate. Lay your hand on it. Okay, hit your chest. Hit yeah. my chest. No, no. <laughs> you put a pad on it. <laughs> Now the school, uh, the Cuban School of Boxing, is one of the, the greatest uh, places to learn learn boxing. They got lawyer Laura, they got uh, Ortiz. <laughs> now, what, what is what does he think that is different between the, uh, the Cuban School of Boxing that they don't teach anywhere else in the world? No, it's just not that they don't teach it. Because uh, Ford Mather, those guys were from here. Got the Philippines, yes. They do so much fighting. They got so much experience. Right. It's, it's a difference. Experience wins fights. All the champs you got here have a lot of amateur fights. Ward, Floyd, Oscar, the New York amateur champs, Olympic champs. Uh, what's, beat, what's beating everybody is the amateur background. It's got to be under 50 fights. That I counted. I've been fighting, learning spots since 11. So I guess any kid we get, and they breed that. The majority of people here, we, we breed basketball, baseball. They all breed. Football, um, baseball with air boxing. Now why, now why exactly uh, can't Cuban fighters, why do they have to defect to, to actually get fights here? Well, you can't go pro in Cuba. It's a communist country. There's right. no money, there's no anything. It's controlled all one system. Give me a second. How many times you plan to fight this year? Two more times if we can. We can't fight three, we'll fight three. Right. We're trying to fight every two months. That's what Golden Boy has planned for. It's just finding the fights. Nobody wants to fight. Right. Like HBO, Peter Nelson said. Everybody says they want to fight. 20 people said they want to fight. He'll show you 20 empty contracts. Marcus outside. Brown won today. Yeah, yeah. Marcus Brown got nothing. He ain't going to want to fight us either. Just what do you think of I have, man. That's a big name. I'm telling you, he ain't gonna want to fight. We'll show you an empty contract again. So what do you think about Oscar De La Hoya saying that, you know, Ortiz is the most feared man in the heavyweight division? Ask the guys that don't want to fight him. Why don't you guys interview Wilder and all the other guys and see what they're gonna sell it. Okay, they'll so give him the respect. Him. They said it. Peter yeah, Fury's, Peter but, Fury's but, trainer, his uncle said he's a fan of King Kong. What more do you want? But, but George, do you feel that Oscar De La Hoya is gonna allow your fighter, Luis Ortiz, to cross the street? And fight on PBC or on Showtime? No. So it's not really it's the wildest of afraid, it's is it? It's all business. Exactly. Uh, Oscar Oya fought uh, Pacquiao. So? Those guys didn't talk. The promoters don't talk. HBO and Showtime. What more war than that? But and they the, made the fight, man. But aren't those fights called big business? Like Mayweather, Pacquiao? Those man, things take Wilder time. And Ortiz and Wilder and, and Ortiz and those, that's big business. So you think that happens right away? No problems. No hiccups. Two different networks. It, it, I think with a couple more fights, yeah. The fans are going to ask for it. I think their fans on their side are asked for it and America asked for it for Ortiz to fight. Okay, George Foreman pretty much agree with Oscar saying that, you know, he believes that Ortiz is the most fit man in the heavyweight division. And if he was, you know, fighting in his prime nowadays, he would be scared to fight Ortiz. What yeah, do you he think? said he wouldn't fight him in his dream fight. Yeah, yeah. If he was in his best shape. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 he knows more than all of us, man. Yeah. And he says age in effect. What else can we say? We've got to interview the man again. He's a fan of yeah. a fan of Ortiz. What can we do? That's big come from That's George Foreman. So how the possibilities of him being on the May 7th Canelo Khan card? Well, how are they looking after this performance? Well, HBO said it, Golden Boy, it's up to the opponent to come fight. Mm -hmm. Let's see if he really comes fight. What opponent you guys are thinking for that card, for <coughs> that no, stage? We, we, we got to fight the mandatory for WBA. Yeah, Houston, no. Houston no. After him, it's straight to Tyson Fury and Klitschko, where it wins. We think Tyson Fury and Klitschko won't fight Ortiz. I think one of them will give the belt. Those guys know boxing. They ain't gonna want to fight. So you think the only guy that champ that would fight him would be Wilder? <laughs> if the if the well, that's the biggest money fight. Him and him and uh, him and Joshua. We think Joshua wins, and somewhere down the line they're gonna have to unify. Hmm. See if Wilder gets past. Well, that can, uh, that's a hard fight. If Wilder keeps his distance. He can knock him out. I think he'll knock Bobekin out. We're hoping he knocks him out at the end of the day. <laughs> He's a big fish. Yeah. The American, you know, we go for our guys. We want Wilder to win. So uh, it's boxing. We love boxing. We're gonna root for Wilder from home. Wilder's on our. At the end of the day, it's business, man. We ain't mad at him. This guy uh, Thompson is a little awkward, funny, hard to hit sometimes. So uh, he seemed like he was a little frustrated, you know, early. But he still got, you know, landed the big shot. But he made it ugly early. Uh, Thompson with the slow, sluggish type of style. Now the coach, the coach told Ortiz not to engage. He wanted him to box. Where I feel if he would have let him loose on him, he would have took him out. But the coach wanted him to box. He, he, he's smart, you know. He told him a game plan. Don't don't go after him. He's a guy with 46 fights. He knows what he's doing. Don't walk into that left hand. But I felt he should have let him go on. 
I was a little upset in that call. Mm -hmm. well, it was a sensational knockout, and I think he, you know, proved this point. That, uh, it's something to be reckoned with. I think we should interview Thompson and ask him if he thinks he's a boogeyman now. He said he ain't the boogeyman. <laughs> you know what? I do want to talk to Thompson, too. Probably out of here. He said he retiring after I talked to him. I got it on camera. Well, that's the fourth guy we retired then. Monty Barrett, we retired a lot of guys.